Gary Cohn, who served as an executive at Goldman Sachs and then later was an economic advisor for Donald Trump, gave an interview to Reuters where he defended the big banks in the economic collapse that took place in 2008. He argued that no top bankers should have gone to jail for their role in the crisis because they did not necessarily do anything illegal. In fact, we have a clip for you from that very interview. Take a look. What do you think about, especially on the left, this pronouncement that we haven't ended too big to fail? and. You know, some of your colleagues should have gone to jail at that time, that no one was held accountable. We haven't ended too big to fail. We've created too, we, we've created too big. We've made rules and regulations that make the bigger bigger. Congratulations to the left. <laughs> they have actually created legislation that says you have to be big to survive. Mm -hmm. On your second question, what laws were broken? Well, people lost their homes. People, you know, the banks took all the, these laws, risks. What laws were broken? Well, that, that's what I'm asking you. No, I'm this. asking yeah. you. You said no one went to. You said no one. You said no one was indicted. I thought the U.S. criminal system worked well, that you had to break a law. I didn't think you could be indicted for just because someone didn't like what you did. Well, I guess it's you know is is being in some in some cases reckless or stupid. No, know, who was reckless and frankly. stupid? Was the waitress in in Las Vegas who had six houses leveraged at a hundred percent with no income? Was she reckless and stupid? or Was the banker reckless and stupid? Who broke the law? I just want to know who you think broke the law. No, I know, but you can understand, <laughs> you know, people's anger. So look All again. I love this. I love this question that you and the media love to ask. I love. I love the, the ten-page supplement in the New York Times this week when you got the number ten and it was a blank page. I would love someone to answer okay. what laws were broken. Oh, but you understand people's anger. Right? I love yeah. the justice system in this country. It's one of our biggest competitive advantages that we have one of the most robust legal systems in the world. So tell me what laws were broken. Again, I don't know where you would say they were misled because the banks were marked to market, the banks had their margin, the banks had their security. Again, I don't know what law was broken. So I'll be your huckleberry, and I wish she was better prepared. She framed it as the left says this, she didn't say that she thought laws were broken, but I think laws were broken, so I can clearly explain it to you. Simplest one is fraud. Uh, financial fraud committed at a mass scale. In fact, they had congressional hearings about this, and Senator Levin from Michigan talked about it at length. And uh, then they had emails from, by the way, Goldman Sachs, where you work, Gary Cohen. And so they explained that they were uh, suckering their own customers. And they were selling, for example, one uh, CDO called, a, uh, called Timberwolf. And Tom Montag, who was a senior executive at Goldman Sachs, wrote in an email, boy, that Timberwolf was one crappy deal. So they knew. Mm. Uh, here is a, a report from HuffPost back in 2010. In March 20, 2007 memo, the firm noted that it was game over for subprime as there was an accelerating meltdown for subprime lenders, such as Fremont and New Century. An email the same month remarked that overall as a business, we are selling our longs and covering our shorts. I'll explain what that means in a second. Part of the problem, Levin said, was that Goldman didn't tell its clients it was shorting the market throughout the year. It waited until the end of the year. So uh, shorting something means that you're betting against it. Going long means that you're betting in favor of it. So they were telling their customers, "Oh, Timberwolf is great, you should buy Timberwolf, etc. Meanwhile, they were betting against a lot of those same securities. So that is fraud. You were telling people it's wonderful, go buy it when you were betting against it and you knew it was junk and we have the emails to prove it. Those are the laws that were broken by you and your colleagues, Gary Cohn, for which you all should have gone to jail. But what happened? Obama covered your ass. So uh, Eric Holder in another congressional hearing, the attorney general at the time said that, well, if we put the bankers in jail, uh, it could upset uh, the economic situation, the financial well-being of the banks, and the banks are simply too important to the global economic order. We don't want to endanger that. That is why we are not enforcing the laws against the bankers. That is an amazing admission. Yeah, it's ridiculous because the fact of the matter is that massive bailout that we gave to these too big to fail banks was meant to, uh, you know, 
prevent uh, the, the chaos of them going under, right? There, why should we protect the same executives who fuel the economic collapse? That doesn't make any sense at all. They need to be prosecuted, they should be brought to justice. And I, I wanted to just quickly comment on an example that Gary Cohn gave in that long rant protecting the banks and, and blaming the consumers. So he mentioned the Las Vegas waitress who has six homes and, and you know, six houses and, and what was it? 100% leveraged at 100% with no income. Okay, so let me ask you something. First of all, I don't believe that story. I don't believe that a Las Vegas waitress had six homes leveraged at 100%. But even if I give you the benefit of the doubt and that happened, right? Because there were certainly people who took out mortgages who had no business taking out mortgages. There's no question. But it was the banks that encouraged them to take out those mortgages. So you have the big banks who have the funds to give out these loans. They are the deciders, they're the decision makers, right? So the ball is in their court and they purposely gave out these subprime mortgages to people who would not be able to afford them as soon as the interest rates went up. And then they went off and they bet against those consumers. So now this is really important and, and I wanna explain it because he brought it back up. So let's address what he's saying. So why would a bank wanna give a loan to someone that clearly can't afford it? If it's a waitress and that she couldn't possibly have the ability to pay for those six homes, why would the bank do something against their own interest? Well, there is a reason why, because uh, they were uh, using derivatives. So the more mortgages there were, the more they could gamble on them. So this is, was a fundamental misunderstanding that exists to this day. The housing crisis was the trigger for the collapse, but it wasn't the gun. The gun was derivatives. Derivatives are what bankers like Gary Cohn used to gamble on different securities, including the housing market. So they wanted to have as many mortgages out there as possible to make money off of them. And, and here's a really important part, because they make the bonuses in the short term and the costs are in the long term. So they make money when they sell the mortgage, they get commissions, they get interest, etc. Then they package up the mortgages into instruments and they make money off of that. Then they do the derivatives, which is betting on those, sometimes at 10 or 100 times the value of the package of, of mortgages. They make crazy money off of that. Now, but that's set to blow because if you set up something that is that leveraged, it will almost in every instance collapse. But once it collapsed, their plan was, it doesn't matter, we're gonna turn around and that's exactly what Goldman Sachs did. Before it collapses, we're gonna bet against it. Mm -hmm. And we know how badly it's gonna collapse because we're the ones who built it. So they made money on the way up and they made money on the way down. And oftentimes by defrauding their own customers and their counterparties. That was revealed, by the way, some of the fraud was so obvious that most of the banks, a lot of the banks admitted, including the one that Steve Mnuchin, our current Treasury Secretary, worked at and ran, and the one that was his colleague in the Trump administration. And what did they do? They paid billions of dollars in fines, but less money than they made from the fraud in the first place. And then they had Obama protect them and say they're too big to jail. So Gary Cohn, you know exactly how that works. You're the one who built that in the first place. He was among the top two executives at Goldman Sachs. But he sits on that stage smug, knowing that most people don't know what happened. So he can say, oh, please, what laws were broken? We, we did nothing wrong. It was the waitress's fault. He had the temerity to say yeah. that it was the waitress's yeah. fault. Yep. No, you set her up to fail and you knew it and you made money off of both her, uh, the rise up and her demise and all of our demise as we lost eight million jobs, but you kept all the bonuses. You kept all the bonuses and you would have all gone bankrupt, except the taxpayer bailed you out. But Bush did, Obama did, Trump did, and now you sit there all smug like a fat cat going, <laughs> suckers, we got away with it, we put the bill on you. And now I get to pretend that I'm a genius who did everything right and it was the common man's fault for the uh, problems that he created. So this, because one more thing that's important about this, Gary Cohn, top economic advisor to Donald Trump, he quit because of the tariffs. He got his, the loot that he wanted. He went in there to rob the American people one more time through that giant multi-trillion dollar tax cut for the rich and for corporations. 
that Gary Cohn is friends with, has works for, etc. Right? And then when Trump started doing so crazy stuff with the tariffs, he bailed. So that he can then later be a hero and say, "Oh, I stole papers off his desk. I didn't let him do stupid things. And hey, I left early. You could have left after Charlottesville, but you didn't. Right? You didn't. You chose to stay. Why? For the same reason as always, Gary. Your insatiable greed, because you had to get that tax cut for you and your friends. That's what you stayed for. Like what you see? Click the subscribe button below, and don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another video from the Young Turks."